the statements, it clearly says that an amount of 250 was raised by the issue of share capital. That means very simple, share capital, issue of share capital, that is $250. Now, there is further, what is called as a further issue on the long term borrowing was also there to the extent of about 250. Now, if I look at my long term debt, it was 1040 last year, $250 worth of new debt is raised. That means what should be the what should be the debt at the end of the year? The debt at the end of the year should be 1290. The debt at the end of the year should be 1290. But whereas, what is the debt at the end of the year? You see, it is only triple one zero is the kind of debt what you basically see out there. Why is there a difference? Because you might have repaid the some part of the debt. So let us say new debt. Somebody said losses out here. Who said losses? Somebody said losses or something. No? Nobody said that? No, no, I overheard something. But if it is new debt, that means $250 worth of debt, new debt should have got added out here. But how much of it is added? If you look at the difference, 1040 plus 250, 1290 minus your 110. That is about, it has increased by about 180. 180 is the difference out there. That 180 is what you would have ideally repaid. There is no mention of it. Why it reduces? Because unless you repay, it cannot reduce. Or somebody must have said, your karzam off, that is, you have waived it off for you. If there is a waived it off for you, then it will come here. Then you don't have to do cash outflow. Nobody has waived it. It doesn't come anywhere out here. So, that is debt repayment minus 180 out there. Then there is a last aspect out here, which is basically what we call it as, it is also there out here, that is a point number 3 in this particular case. Point number 3 in this particular case out here, which says that dividend paid was 1200. There is a dividend which was paid, which is about 1200. Dividend is a cash outflow dividend paid. Yeah, one second, ma'am. Yeah. Interest expenditure? Oh, I'm sorry. Then there's a, one more aspect out here. Oh, fine. Let us look at dividend. Yeah. So the new uh, borrowings which are coming in are only actually uh, taking care of it in the repayment part, right? Yeah, no. But I'm not taking care of it as a repayment part. The 250 which is coming through share. Okay. Now let us look at let us look at it. What are the what are the what are the old debt? One zero four zero. Uh, one zero four zero. Old debt. One zero four zero. Okay. Increased. Now, new debt. Two hundred and fifty makes it twelve ninety. Now, as per balance sheet. What is the what is the balance at the current year? Triple one zero. Well, triple one zero is the balance out here. That means about a nine minus one is eight, and then one out here. What happens to this difference? The difference is what you have repaid out there. Yeah, that is what I have taken out. But on top, sir, new debt. Are we also? This is what it is. There are two activities. Oh. This is the original part of it. Plus this. Or you can just take, I would say, or else you want to do it, I will just take the difference between these two and enter as one simple figure out there. That is net increase in debt. Okay. Net increase in debt, if you look at uh, 0110 minus 1040, that is about 60 plus 10, 70 dollars is what you will enter in that particular case. In this case, two activities have happened. How much have you got? You have got 250, borrowed new. How much have you repaid? 180 have repaid. Keep it separate. But Net have, increase is only 70. The new debt we are actually using, we are actually settling it in the, this calculation itself now. So the old debt, the new debt, we are adding the new debt. And then we are also minusing what has already been uh, the old, the... I have not done anything. Net effect, if you look at, I, I, you keep this away from here. 
let's keep this away what is the net increase in debt that is end of the year debt with uh, oh, sorry pvd okay out here is triple one zero beginning of the year debt is one zero four zero what is the net increase net increase is 70 so what is this 250 minus 180 plus 250 minus 180 so what have I, what have what have you done here you have treated is a net increase only from this you have not looked at that what happens how did it become 70 now i have looked at how that became 70 that becomes 70 not just because of one activity because of two activities what are those two activities one i have got a new debt other i have repaid a old debt out here yeah. clear pradeshta any queries so far now, there is one more last aspect out here, if I look at in this particular case, there is what is called as an interest expenditure of $400 in the p &L. Interest expenditure of $400, interest you pay on what is called as your borrowings out there. Interest expenditure for p and p and statement sir, p and statement, interest expenditure $400. Now, Anything corresponding to that in the balance sheet, you see, there is what is called as interest payable last year was 100 and this year is 230. That means what is the total interest payable this year, due this year, 400 plus 100. What is due for the last year? Total interest, you are liable to pay $500 worth of interest. Am I with you, Malika? Following? No. One second. Interest is an expenditure. Interest payable is an expenditure occurring because of a financing activity. Is that clear first? Now, what is the interest expenditure for the year? Interest payable, interest expenditure is 400 as per your PNL. Now, what is due last year? That is opening balance at the, at the end of the last year, at the beginning of the year, $100 is due. What is your total liability on the interest as of to, as of this year? Total liability of for you as of interest is 400, which is for this year, plus what is due at the end of the last year, that is or what is due at the beginning of this year, the total liability of interest is $500. Have you paid the entire 500? I, I will check. What is still due at the end of the year? 230 is still due at the end of the year. That means how much have you paid? That is, we are assuming that nobody has waived it off. It is reducing because you paid. So, how much have you paid net? You have paid net only $270 out here. So, interest expenditure $270. Have I taken everything? Now, what is the cash flow from what is called as financing? Minus nine. Minus Now you total all the three, 1830 we had, that is what I call it as, we will let us, let us put it as, uh, I will move further down, cash flow from operations, that is 1830, cash flow from uh, investing activity, cash flow from financing activity, Minus triple double one five zero. Right. Now you had cash at the beginning of the year. Cash and cash equivalent. Now marketable securities you would say that is what is treated as cash equivalent. Now I just add that cash and plus cash equivalent at the opening part of it. Opening part of it. That is at the beginning of the year. Why am I adding? Because you are starting your, when you get your salary this year, you are adding it to the money, what you had left over at the end of last month out there. Please understand, that is the entire pool. So I am just adding that. If I add that, what is the amount out here? 135 plus 25, that is 160. If I total this, then I should get what is called, what is the amount I am getting? 870, if I am getting out here, I am getting about 870, that is cash and cash equivalent at the end of the year, what you basically check up with your balance sheet out there. 
200 plus what is called as your 670 out there it matches. Am I with you on this? So far, now this part of it is clear. What did we do? We took the opening cash. Instead of though, you could have added this opening cash to your operations itself. That is not a problem. You could have started off with that. Not an issue. I have tracked all the money. This is what we call it as the direct method out there. Let's not worry about direct, indirect. Let's just worry about cash flow. That's all. Yes, sir. Now, these are the cash flows what I've had from three activities. Now, I need to know what is the cash I have at the end of this particular year. How I have got that. Now, these cash flows have occurred. You are adding that cash to what was left over at the end of the last month or the last year. What was the money that was in left over at the end of the last year is 160. That is opening cash and cash equivalent. Balance sheet. Not 200. 25 and last year, cash and cash equivalent. Cash equivalent is marketable security. 25 plus 135. So that is there at the beginning of that is there at the beginning of this year or at the end of last year. Am I with you on this? So I am just adding that cash to whatever is the cash flow. That is when you will know. See, simple. You got your salary this month. This is how you have spent your salary. But what is the cash that is there with you? The cash that is there with you is this. But this here is not equal to this. Why? Because end of last month, some money was left in your wallet. You are adding that money to in their wallet. So that is all what I have done, sir. So far so clear? Sir, is there any difference between cash and fund? Because when you are referring to source of fund, you are telling source of? Source of finance. Uh, that is, sources of fund, utilization of funds. Here we are looking at sorts of funds. For sorts of funds in the sense, where are you getting the money from? That is all. There is no difference between cash and fund. Cash, there is a lot of sorts of sorts of cash. We can't say cash entirely because, for example, creditors is a source of fund for you. But there is no cash. They are not giving cash. What are they giving? They are giving you goods instead of cash. That is that I call it fund. Fund is a little more broader term. Also. So, the marketable securities is a cash. Marketable securities is cash equivalent, sir. Normally, we take it as cash equivalent. Because anything cash equivalent or any of these instruments which can be converted to cash in a GFE. I can just go to the I can just go to the market, sell the what do you call it as my securities out there and get the money out there. So it is convertible to cash. It is convertible to cash. These are all called as that is what is, which is easily convertible to cash. With you on this? So far so good. Now cash flow is clear. Check up with all of them. What are you doing? Sir, they are asking, can you explain opening cash and cash equivalent? Okay, yeah. fine. Now, open, what is opening cash and cash equivalent? So what did you do out here? Imagine through the month, imagine the 1st of February, you got your salary and then you have had a series of expenditures out here. And you have divided your expenditures into three basic parts of it and this is the kind of amount what you have from each of these three aspects out here. Now, but the cash what you have at the end of the month, the, uh, as of today, is not equal to an addition of 1830 plus 30 minus 1150. It is little more than that. Why is it more than that? Because when you got the money, the cash this month on 1st of February, what did you do? You added it to the money that was there with you as of January 31st, which was basically left out there. What is the money that was left on January 31st with you? In this case, it is 160. Now, I pull all this together, that is when I will get this money. That is, you start off with this money, then you add these three, then basically you will get what is the money that you have. That is how it is. Have they check up if they are clarified? Is it uh, clear? If it is clear, you can just put in a message. I will just wait for a second. Now let them, let them respond. Let them respond, Pratik. Huh? Yes? Yes, sir. You guys have got it? Fine. If you are still not clear, please tell me. You don't clarify. If there is a question, ask me. Sir, Anshuman Dhal is not clear. Anshuman, you are not clear. Okay, fine. Anshuman, you are in Bangalore. I can understand. The distance will also make it a problem. Right? <laughs> so, now, anyway, let us let me, I think, use the board out here.
your cash flow that is generated from the operations out here, operating activity in this particular month is 1830. Now, when you, how did you, you had some cash at the beginning of the year, you started off with that cash, your operations out there. What was the cash that was at the beginning of the year in this particular case? Beginning of the year, you had a cash of about, in this particular case, of about $160. You had that cash and then you started your operations and that is what yielded you one unit 30. You are, what is called as your investing in this particular case is basically yielded you 30 and your financing is yielded you what is called as negative 150. Out here. Now, what, do I, what am I trying to say? I started off with this cash of $160. Basically, that is the money I have in my pocket. And this is what this operations has generated. This is what investing has generated. This is what financing has generated. So, what is the cash I need to have at the end of the entire uh, time period out here? It is basically an aggregate of all these three. If you do an aggregate of all these three, you are getting your what is called as your number. Is it clear for everyone now? No, if it's clear, clear? Okay, fine, that's great, I'm sure. Now go to 11.4, 11.4 in your textbook. A very simple problem. <coughs> very simple problem. 11.4, I specifically sent a mail that you have to carry your textbook as well as your, that spiral bond stuff also. You have photocopied no. You didn't bring, I think you have to manage with him. No, I need that. Just move on. 11.4. Just spend 5 minutes, 2 minutes reading it, 10 minutes solving it, otherwise we'll solve it. 11.4. Page number, page number. 339. Page number 339. 11.4. 339. 11.4. 338 is it? Okay, 338. Take two minutes to read, ten minutes to solve. I am going to be patient, even for the guys who are locked down from remote locations. Let's focus here. Last problem what we did, what we did, we basically traced all the cash, that is cash expenditures, cash ex income, that is what is the cash inflow, cash out, uh, outflow in a business situation for the entire year and track. In this situation, what we are trying to do, we'll do the same cash flow statement, but we will not do it so directly. We'll try to indirectly trace the path. How to indirectly trace the path? First assumption, if the entire business transactions is on cash, then the profit should be equal to cash what I have. That is, profit should be equal to cash, the amount of profit plus cash at the beginning of the year should be equal to cash at the end of the year. If the entire business operation, including, there is no, imagine there is no depreciation, if the entire operation is only on cash, then what should the cash I have in my cash box should be equal to the profit plus the cash at the beginning of the year out there. Am I with you on this? Now, in this case, let us start with that particular assumption. Okay. This particular case, what is the profit or loss? Profit or loss is $11,000 out there. That is what I have written. Now, let us go back and adjust those aspects which would have impacted the profit but would not have impacted the cash out there. I repeat, let us go and adjust for those aspects which would have ideally impacted the profit but not impacted the cash part of it. A simple example, depreciation. As an expenditure, if you knock off, it impacts the profit or not? Yes, it impacts the profit. Whereas, does it impact what is called as your cash inflow or outflow? It does not impact your cash out there. So, first and foremost, in this particular case, if I see, there is what is called as depreciation for the year. The depreciation for the year is about 26,400. So, I add back depreciation 26,400. Yes or no so far? Imran, following? Now the 
next aspect if i look at in this particular case fuel driver salary taxes and license repairs and miscellaneous these are the expenditures in the p and l like let us look at one by one let us look at fuel fuel is 77000 dollars if the entire amount has paid then it would not be different it would have impacted the cash as much as it would have impacted the p and l statement if there is something due or last year's due i have paid then the impact would be very different out there now guy go back and look at the balance sheet of last year and see and this year is there anything pertaining to fuel in the balance sheet there is nothing so that means the impact on the p and l as well as on the cash because of a fuel expenditure is exactly the same am i with you on this so far so clear next let us look at the other aspect out here there is something called as drivers salaries this year is 44000 if i go back to the balance sheet the says accrued salaries last year was about if i look at 5500 this year is about 88 8800 that means salaries as of now driver salaries if i look at it is about roughly 44000 last year that is the amount for this particular year but that is what i have charged in the pnl and that is what has yielded me what is called as a profit or loss of 11000 but have i paid the entire 44000 no because there is a increase in what is called as that is uh, the payable that is accrued salary last year was 5500 this year is 8800 that means 3300 dollars has increased that means Out of that forty-four thousand, I have not paid three thousand three hundred, or you have not paid the entire eight thousand eight hundred, but you have paid the last year's five thousand five hundred. Whatever way you look at it, the net impact is three thousand three hundred. It has increased. That means what has happened? Your that is your cash flow, cash that is there in your hand. Your profit has gone down by three thousand three hundred because your return has forty-four hundred. Whereas your cash has stayed a little up out here at this point by three thousand three hundred. I'm I'm look let us look at it. Your cash and your profit. You have charged forty four thousand on your P and L statement. Profit has gone down. That is your uh, expenditure. Your profit has gone down. Whereas how much of cash you have removed? You have not removed forty four thousand. You have removed about forty one thousand or forty thousand and whatever seven hundred is what. So there is a difference out there. So what do I do? I add it back to the profit over there. So I am just adding back accrued salaries out here to the extent of three thousand three hundred. Am I with you? So far so clear, sir. Now I move on. Next aspect out here. There is something called as taxes and licenses. I have paid. There is nothing. pending in the balance sheet as of now right whatever is the impact taxes and license for the year is 22000 there is nothing pending or there was nothing pending last year so the impact on both is basically the same out there this is cash this is pnl this is cash right my right hand is cash and my left hand is pnl let us keep it base cash is always on the right hand right you need money now the next aspect out here repairs out here in this particular case if you look at repairs out here 30800 is there 30800 is there and then uh, basically what you call it as that is the money which should have basically there is no nothing else pending in the balance sheet so it is the same thing that part of it is taken care of in this particular case out here and then there is nothing there is miscellaneous expenditure that is also taken care of out here now let us look at the other balance sheet aspects out here or let us look at your pnl aspect also. you have said there is a revenue of 191400 when you have said there is a revenue of 191400 that means ideally that is the money that you should have received out there that is 191400 out here your profit your what is called as your profit would have gone up Then, if you have received the same thing, your cash would have also gone. Have you received the entire money? If you look at your debtors out there in this particular case, our accounts receivable, 
Last year was 26,400. This year is 8,800. 8, that means what has happened? Huh? You have received much more. That is what happens. Your sales is 191,400. You have gone here. That means it is there. And then, but cash, what has happened? You have received what was due last year. So what has happened to your cash? Your cash has increased. By what amount? The difference between what was due last year and what is due this particular year. Am I with you? Again, I repeat. My, uh, uh, my sales in my organization takes place. How much? 1,91,400. Agreed. It has gone. My profit has gone up. Now, what happens to my cash? My cash also should go to that extent. Yes, it is at the same level. But I have received money, what was due last year also. So my cash has gone far above that. So that also I added back. That is what is called as, that is accounts receivable that of last year. How much is it? 17,600 is what I have received. Then what else? We looked at receivable. Then when we look at receivable, payable, payable. we have to look at what is payable also. If you look at your payables, accounts payable. Accounts payable is the sense is for basically for all your purchases. Me somebody's mobile, no? Everybody put your mobile off, 15 minutes more, but please put your mobile off. Now, come back here. If I come back here, you please not. There is a receivable, there is a payable. We said that fuel drivers, uh, sorry, fuel, taxes and repairs, etc. We didn't find anything. All that is clubbed together in your payables out there. That is why we didn't find it any separate, anything separate out there. Accounts payable last year was 5,500. This year is 8,800. That means what has happened? Your payable has increased. If your payable has increased, what would be the difference? That means cash outflow. For example, there is a expenditure you incur your profit goes down. But your cash has not gone down to the same extent because you still have to pay 3,300. It has stayed a little up out there. I repeat, my expenditure happens, my profit comes down. Imran, one second. I'm sorry. 22, 22 to 30, that is fine, that is what, let us, let us look at it. Let us, the account payable is 22 and 30, I know that, that is not a problem. General, if you look at any expenditure that happens, your, what is called as, your profit comes down. So your cash also, basically if you have paid the entire thing, your cash should also be at the same level. Last year, what is the account payable? 22,000. What is the payable this year? That means what has happened? 8,000 payable is increased. That means when your cash and expenditure, when, when your profit comes down to an extent, extent because of an expenditure, will your cash will also be come down to the same extent? Your cash has stayed about 8,000 rupees higher because you are not paid. Please understand. Your cash has stayed about 8,000 rupees higher in that particular case because there is an expenditure. Profit comes down. So cash also has to come down, but cash has stayed up by 8,000 rupees because you have not paid 8,000 rupees. So what do I do? Accounts payable increase in this particular case is also about 8,800. So will it decrease or increase? What are we doing it? You are adjusting with the profit. You are adjusting it to the profit. So what happened? In this case, your profit has come down, your cash has stayed here, so what are you interested in knowing? Are you interested in knowing the profit or the cash? Yeah, I'm interested in knowing the cash. So what do I have to do? I have to raise the profit out there. Always keep your right hand as cash, left hand as profit. You keep adjusting, you will know that. Not a problem. So far so clear? Then, next aspect out here. If I look at the balance sheet, there's something called as other accruals. The other accruals was 1100 last year. 
this year has increased to about 3300. Accruals means basically it is part of your liability. Liability means you ought to pay. That means you ought to pay means you would have charged it as an expenditure. So when you ought to pay liability out there, that is your charge is an expenditure, your profit has come down. Whereas what you have to be your cash has stayed up by $2,200 because the difference between 1100 and 3300 out there. Your cash has stayed up by $2,200. Yes, Malika, you are not following. You are lost out. Tell me. Sure, no problem. Anything basically which is related to your payment for basically your core, your manufacturing related operation. Normally your purchase of your raw material etc. or pay, etc. I mean, or your what is called as inventory, different kinds of uh, traded goods etc. All that will constitute account payable. For example, I might purchase fuel in that case, right? For example, if you have a, an engineer might know, there's a lathe machine. In the lathe, you have something what is called as a, a coolant which keeps flowing on the job that is there, whether honing, boring, whatever you do. I'm not an engineer, but still, uh, I've seen a lathe that, now that coolant I can buy. That is not a raw material, but that is necessary for my processing. I would buy it on credit. So money I have to pay will be part of your accounts payable, bills payable, creditors, yeah, there is a subtle difference between all that, but as of now, let's keep all that together. With you on this? Move to the next one, in this particular case. Sure. In this case, accrual. Accrual, anything, some expenditure is accrued. Last year, last year, like some expenditure, it could be either any of these miscellaneous expenditure itself, let us take it for that matter. Last year, moment there is an expenditure, your profit has come down. So your cash should also come down, but your cash, what happens? It has floated a little above. Why? Because you have not paid about $2,200 yet. Last year was $1,100, this year is $1,300. So what do you do? I increase my profit by $2,200 out there. That is, accruals increase another $2,200. With you so far? Move on further in this. If I move on further in this, that is what is operations. Basically, we have finished, exhausted everything. Now, let us look at what is called as my investing activity. If I look at my investing activity, ideally, I should look at the asset side of the balance sheet. All of us know that. If I look at the asset side of the balance sheet, there are only three items. Cash, accounts receivable and net total fixed asset. Cash, I will not worry about. Accounts receivable, we have taken. Net fixed assets out there. If you look at net fixed asset, last year was 2,24,400, this year is 1,98,000. So what has happened? It's a, if you see the difference, that is exactly equal to the depreciation. If you see the amount, but if it is more than depreciation, that means what has happened? Either it has become scrap or you have basically sold, there is a cash inflow that is basically generated out there. Right? Because this, what he has given is not gross, like what we looked at the last time. We are looking at the net fixed asset out there. That difference is exactly equal to depreciation. So in this particular case, your cash flow from investing activity is zero. Rajesh, there is some problem. I don't know. I just want to have the camera. Right? Very clear. Now let's look at the financing activity. Cash flow from financing activity part of it. If I look at the cash flow from financing activity out of it, if you look at the financing activity is what? Long term debt and capital. Even let us look at the capital. Last year's capital was 96,800. This year's capital is 85,800. So what has happened? Adjusted to the loss. Adjusted basically to the loss. You look at the loss. 96,800 minus 11,000 will basically give you 85,800. That is basically what happens. Your capital when we say capital is always Share capital plus your reserves and surplus. That is what we will look at owner's equity. That is what I said right in the first class itself, what I taught you. When I say capital, equity, equity is not only what is denominated in shares because your value of equity changes every year with your 
reserve some surplus changing because your retained earnings get added. So where capital means capital, share capital plus your reserves and surplus, the entire thing. In this case, it's a loss, so it has gone down by so much. So that is not there's no impact on the cash flows per se. Let us look at the long-term debt. If I look at the long-term debt, last year was 1,29,800. This year it is only 1,100. That means what has happened? Repaid. You have basically repaid what is called as well, cash flow. That is repayment of debt. What is the amount out here? 29,700. Now what is the cash flow you are getting out here? What is the cash you are getting out here? Just add it and subtract. Huh? 17,600. What is the last part of the question out here? Last part of the question. He says that Crumb does not understand how the company can be 17,600 ahead of last year in terms of cash in hand with a loss of 11,000. You have traced it. Now, this 17,600 plus what is the last year's cash what you have? 4,400. You add that. What do you get out here? It's not magic, right? It's not magic, Pratishta. No, it's not magic. It's just that I have shown the entire calculation. No, this is funny. The answer is already there. <laughs> right? That's all. So what did you do? We just traced it. This is what is called as indirect method. So what we did? We traced it. Whichever is easier for you, you can do it. Not necessarily. I have taught you two methods of looking at cash flows. Now, I want you guys to try exercise 11.5, not now as a homework and by the time you come tomorrow, X 11.5 should be solved. It will take not more than 20 minutes. It will take not more than 20 minutes. And for students who are not physically present here or online also, by the time we meet tomorrow, they should be ready with 11.5. Only then we will sort of be comfortable. So with this, I end cash flow. Tomorrow, you bring the manual that, uh, what do you call it as, my handout, what I've given. Or open on your laptop your uh, Maruti Udyog's annual report, but opening on the laptop because I'll be running from pages to pages, you will keep moving up and down. If you're comfortable with it, it's fine. Whatever. I'll be discussing only the annual report of Maruti Udyog, which is already printed out there in this basic handout what I've given. Clear on that? Fine. Thank you very much. <laughs>